Today, approximately 1 billion people call the continents of North and South America home. These individuals have come in waves of migrations throughout history, from all over the world, although only around 56 million people across the Americas today are descended from indigenous populations. The indigenous peoples of the Americas can trace their lineage back a long way. Recent research places the first Americans as having migrated from Asia between 26 and 18,000 years ago. These people came over from eastern Siberia when the world was still in the throes of the last glacial period, and they would have entered a new rich world, teeming with both resources and danger. In today's video, we will be examining how early humans spread out into and across the Americas, tracing their origins in what is today Alaska, right through to their migration across the continents as a whole. Sit back and relax as we trace one of the most impressive journeys in human history. To understand how early humans were able to reach North America in the first place, we have to take a look at where two worlds meet. Early humans were able to cross over a now sunken land bridge that connected the northeast coast of Siberia with the northwest coast of Alaska. Today, North America and Asia are separated by the Bering Sea, which formed when the last glacial period ended and the sea levels rose. This in turn effectively saw Beringia swallowed by the sea, isolating the people who had made it across the land bridge to America from those who remained in Eurasia. The two worlds would not meet again until Europeans started traveling across the Atlantic to explore the West. Hence, the Old World, consisting of Europe, Asia, Africa and Oceania, became separated from the New World, North and South America. Early humans first crossed Beringia into the content of North America as far back as 26,000 years ago. These were exclusively Homo sapiens. Neanderthals did not make it to the Americas and we are the only ape species to have ever set foot in the Americas as truly wild animals. For several thousand years, humans could come and go across the Bering Land Bridge, migrating across to the New World to spread out and settle. The continent of North America would have been an untouched wilderness of wide open plains, sprawling forests, jagged mountains and vast lakes. Here, these early humans encountered a whole host of animals to hunt too. Mammoths, familiar to Eurasian migrants, were accompanied by less familiar mastodons, and stranger megafauna, such as the giant ground sloths and glyptodonts, could be found further in. 13 to 11,000 years ago, the colossal quantities of water held in the glaciers of the Ice Age began to melt as the world warmed the planet's lowlands would soon become submerged as they flooded with glacial seawater, and Beringia would become a sunken memory. The same thing was happening in other parts of the world. Australia would become fully separated from Papua New Guinea as the Sahul land bridge became flooded, and the British Isles would become separated from mainland Europe as Doggerland sank beneath the waves of the North Sea. So, the first Americans were now trapped in the continent they had settled in, unable to return back the way they had come via the Bering Land Bridge. It would not take long in archaeological terms before these early migrants would spread out across the continents of North and South America to become the early nations, tribes and communities that would crop up in the historical record. So, how did they do it? Although there was no going back to Eurasia without efficient and technologically advanced boats that early humans simply did not have, the reality is that many early Americans had in fact settled in North America by the time the land bridge disappeared. Many were likely unaware it had even gone. The retreating of the ice sheets at the end of the last glacial period would have made travel much more simple for the people who were already in America by the time the land bridge disappeared, however. For example, the Laurentide Ice Sheet, which covered much of Canada and the northeastern reaches of what are now the United States, began to retreat when the Ice Age came to an end. This permitted a corridor to open up between it and the neighboring Cordilleran Ice Sheet, 
which formerly spread out across much of the northeastern United States. Some groups of early humans were able to travel through that corridor, helping them to travel further south throughout the Americas with a greater degree of ease. As the world warmed, other early American groups found themselves sticking to the coastlines, where they likely relied upon the warming shallow seas for food. Several groups appeared to have clung to the Pacific coast of North America as they traveled, making their way down to what would one day become California and eventually Mexico via the Kelp Highway. While some of these groups may have traveled on foot along the shores and cliffs of the coastline, others may even have traveled using basic wooden boats strong enough to withstand the lapping of coastal waves. Due to the abundance of food along the Kelp Highway, this was likely a safer route for humans to take, while much of America was still covered in ice and snow. Fish and shellfish, abundant in the widespread kelp forests, would have provided these early folks with protein, while rivers flowing into the ocean may have provided them with safe drinking water. Several sites have shown that humans had already begun to make the most of these migration routes long before the Bering Land Bridge became flooded with seawater. Paisley Caves, in Oregon, show that early humans had made it to what would become the northern United States by 14,300 years ago. Human coprolites have been found amidst the caves that show that early Americans were living in, or at least passing through them, before the glacial period came to a close. There is evidence that humans had made it to the east coast of the United States even earlier. Remains of pottery, bifaces and jewellery have been found at the Meadowcroft Rock Shelter in Pennsylvania that predate even the Clovis culture. Some researchers have suggested that these finds could be up to 19,000 years old, which, if accurate, would make them some of the oldest prehistoric human artifacts in the entirety of the Americas the land that would eventually encapsulate the southern United States were also populated as far back as 15 and a half thousand years too, with the Buttermilk Creek complex revealing many stone tools that would have helped early humans hunt, create art, and prepare food, the northern Yukon in Canada. The oldest artifacts here, stone tools, may date back to 25,000 years ago, but there is evidence to suggest that the site was populated up until 12,000 years ago. Around 15,000 to 20,000 years ago, humans traveling down south through Mexico would eventually reach Central America, specifically the Isthmus of Panama. This thin strip of land would provide a gateway to the farthest continent from humanity's African origin, South America. This site was vitally important to the natural history of the Americas around three million years prior when the Great American Biotic Interchange occurred. This event, during the Pliocene Epoch, saw the formation of the Isthmus of Panama, linking the two American continents and providing a means for animals to spread north and south between them. Camelids, big cats, proboscidians and horses would travel into South America from the north, while sloths, armadillos, rodents and terror birds would travel into North America from the south. Now, humans were taking part in the very journey taken by millions of mammals before them. South America was another world, and one that would prove no mean feat to conquer. The first humans to cross the land bridge formed at the Isthmus of Panama would find themselves in what would one day become Northwest Colombia a land of tropical forest that would begin to merge with the mighty Amazon. While present only in the southern reaches of North America, rainforest dominated the northern half of South America and couldn't have been easy terrain to travel through. One route of early migrations into South America seems to have taken early humans directly through the Amazon, spreading out towards the east coast of what would one day become Brazil. These people would have faced big cats, venomous reptiles and difficult terrain, but nonetheless, many would settle throughout the jungle and eventually, civilization would emerge. Other routes explored even trickier terrain. Major migration routes followed the Andes mountain range south through Chile, Peru and Argentina, taking nomadic groups of early humans right through to the southern tip of the continent. From the edge of the Andes, 
Some humans spread out into Argentina's open grasslands and deserts, while others seem to have traveled down the coastline to the very end of the mountain range. One of the earliest sites that shows evidence of early humans populating South America can be found in Chile. Monteverde, located in the southern reaches of the country, can be dated back to around 14 and a half thousand years ago. And a wide range of tools and structures have been found here. The people of Monteverde appear to have built simple wooden tents in grassy marshland at the base of the Andes, tied together with early forms of rope. Animal bones and the tools used to butcher them indicate that these people were hunting ancient relatives of elephants, known as gomfa theories, using their hides to protect themselves from the elements. Monteverde supports the idea that early humans migrated into the Americas via coastlines. The people here appear to have traveled south to the west of the Andes before settling in southern Chile. Along the way, they would have clung to the shoreline for food before finally settling in the abundant, marshy site of Monteverde. Further ancient evidence of early South Americans comes from Argentina's Arroyo Seco, two site, in the pampas grasslands that would have once been filled with giant ground sloths, glyptodons, and saber-toothed cats. Radiocarbon dating has placed Arroyo Seco, too, at around 14,000 years old, and the remains of many extinct South American megafaunal mammals have been discovered at the site. Alongside them are tools made of quartz and flint that would have been used to butcher remains and process food. It is here that we can directly see the link between the Pleistocene extinctions and human advancement throughout the ancient world. Whereas earlier finds at Arroyo Seco have shown that humans were hunting large animals, the remains of small and medium mammals begin to appear as time goes on, showing that the inhabitants of this site were adapting to changes in the environment they may well have been contributing to. This site appears to still have been occupied at the turn of the Holocene Epoch, when most of the megafaunal mammals were extinct. The Americas were some of the very last main landmasses of planet Earth to be conquered by Homo sapiens. By the time humans made it to North America by way of the Bering Land Bridge, other groups of people had already settled across other isolated landmasses such as Australia as they hopped over the Indonesian islands to reach the Sahul. Around the same time, humans made it to the eastern and southern reaches of South America. People in Europe were reaching the British Isles and Scandinavia. America was something of a final frontier in that sense. Of course, all of this migration did not take place in one wave. Many populations would have faced trial and error when settling in specific regions, and there appears to have been a second major wave of people travelling into the Americas around 15,000 years ago, just before Beringia disappeared. Once the Americas were conquered, there would only be a few more notable mass migrations of ancient populations, mainly to small landmasses that were particularly hard to reach. Around 1,000 years ago, humans made it to the islands of the South Pacific, specifically Hawaii, New Zealand, Rapa Nui, and Polynesia. Madagascar was reached by inhabitants of the islands of the Indian Ocean around one and a half thousand years ago, while Scandinavian populations would reach Iceland just after. Migration continues to this day. It is nothing new, nor is it anything to be feared. In a way, we are all migrants, and our migrations will continue as long as human beings are alive on this planet.